We attach ourselves to people that make us feel warm and welcomed. It helps build community and it helps our survival. If you have untreated trauma, it affects you on a DNA level, you can pass that onto your kids. So it's well worth getting your trauma sorted out. And I do my best to see that silver lining within every experience. The solution should be simple, but it's not because we're talking about culture change, talking about changing behaviours, we're talking about challenging identities. Hey guys, and welcome back to the MindMate podcast. And uh, today I, I'm, I'm going to start doing these things where I just kind of talk about ideas and concepts that I've been talking about frequently with clients that I've been seeing. Uh, in the counseling process, uh, because I think it's a great way to just broaden out a lot of the concepts that don't necessarily just apply to individuals, but human beings um, on the whole. And so many of us go through similar things. Obviously, what we go through is context dependent and we have different circumstances and you know different lives, but the way our bodies and our minds respond to, for example, stressful situations um, is something that we can all learn. and. Um, and it it will help kind of orient our, our our lives in a much more effective way, much more conducive to bettering our mental health and and so forth. So I thought I might start doing these when I'm not interviewing guests. Um, I might just start going through ideas and 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 tools and things that I've been talking about with uh, some of the very cool clients um, that I get to deal with um, throughout the week. So um, today's episode is all about anxiety. And uh, a lot of people are going through anxiety at the moment. It's crazy. It's, um, you know, it's not often seen uh, as just a normal emotion. People kind of talk about anxiety as though it's a disorder. Uh, and it certainly can be a disorder depending on how long you've been dealing with high anxiety. So at a, at a, at a clinical level, which basically just means, uh, you know, you've, you've had it for more than two weeks, I think it is. Um, it's been pretty severe. But the main point or the, the main marker of, what's, of how we die diagnose clinical anxiety or disorders in general is uh, that it's negatively impacting your everyday life. So that's kind of what you want to look out for. So there are ways that therapists, counselors, clinicians kind of differentiate between what's a normal amount of anxiety and then what's actually uh, a disorder. So if, if you find yourself in the category of disorder, if it's really negatively impacting your life, um, or if you just want to get a better understanding of what anxiety really is. You know, this is a short podcast today, but um, hopefully it'll be effective. Uh, or if you want to take a more preventative approach to your mental health, uh, specifically with anxiety, then please continue to listen because um, we'll hit a number of points today. So I, I put a video up on my Instagram recently, which was um, all about an analogy. So it was talking about anxiety as though it was kind of like water in a bathtub. And so you can imagine that uh, a 10 out of 10 uh, anxiety level is conducive to a panic attack. A zero out of 10 is just absolute ecstasy and elation, best day of your life, most satisfying, calming, relaxing day of your life, that kind of thing. Um, as you work up the scale, you're going to see the analogy kind of makes sense. So someone's put a bath plug in the bath and has continued to allow the water to run. So the, the water is beginning to get to that point where you want to either turn the tap off or take the bath plug out so the bath doesn't overflow. That's kind of how you can see this accumulative effect of your anxiety. You can imagine, you know, stressful commute, boss has given you shit, whole bunch of stuff, financial debt, uh, relationship issues, you know, that anxiety level is going zero, one, two, three, four, beyond five, it starts to get pretty insane. And then uh, one kind of little, you know, mouse that rocked the boat can, can push you into a panic attack or something like that where the bath starts to overflow. But what I want you guys to think about, and this is some of the stuff that I've been talking about with my clients recently, is watching and really focusing on how you feel from a day-to-day -day perspective. So you might wake up and be a three and then you might have a, you know, you might be having a coffee in, in the morning. I love coffee, by the way. Yes, it can initiate that kind of adrenaline response, that sympathetic nervous system response, but coffee is also great tasting as well. So you've got to factor that in. Uh, you might be a three and you might go, I wonder why I'm a three. And you're like, oh, that's right. I had that thought last night, which reminded me of that experience when two years ago. And I never really rectified that. I've got to, I must, I must speak to them and just apologize. Or I must 
speak to them and make sure they know where I'm coming from, you know, and you can kind of work in that so that, you know, cause they say, what do they say? Um, a guilty, con- a, a guilt-free conscience is the best pillow. It makes the best pillow. I think that's an old German expression, I think, but it, there's, there's so much truth to that, you know? Um, so start to have a feel about where your anxiety comes from because it comes from many different places. You know, I try to do this every day, you know, not, not necessarily just from external cues in the present, you know, a big bang, oh, bang, now I'm a four. <laughs> I don't do it that meticulously, but uh, sometimes it can be from past experience. It can be this low that you're carrying, you know, like a very, um, like an overflowing inbox of all these emails that you've never responded to. So that can be like a one there, a two there, can, you know, already you're kind of a four and a five. And then from the day's events, stressful commute, boss, yada, 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 you're pushing it to a five, six and a seven. So the other important point to consider is that the appropriate tools to help you reduce your anxiety are dependent upon the level of your anxiety in that moment. So I had a client not too long ago and we were talking about um, what to do when she has panic attacks. She'd been doing a lot of stuff with mindfulness, practicing being in the moment, being present, being with the anxiety to not view it as something happening to her so that she wouldn't rush away from it psychologically, which only makes it worse. It's like pushing a, a beach ball down in the ocean and only pops back up, it usually pops back up way, way higher too. Um, when you're kind of at an eight and a nine and a 10, the bath is really overflowing. You know, this is what I was saying to her. The bath is overflowing with water. Would it be the right idea to just watch the bath do that? <laughs> so it's obviously the answer is no. You want to be doing your best to get the bath plug out. You want to be doing your best to turn the tap off. Do what you can. When it's when anxiety is at that level, anxiety is just, a it's just energy and you've just got to get it out. You know, so we were talking about dancing, exercising, getting up off your seat, shaking, shaking your body, um, just doing, doing something like children do. You know, and you see this in the wild too. What you'll find in response to a threat is that deer, after being chased by tigers, will you know, shake vigorously to get all of that nervous tension out of the body because if they don't, not that they're consciously aware of this, by the way, this is just mammalian adaptation you know, from evolutionary selective pressure. If they don't do that, it'll it'll stay within the body so all of that adrenaline and all of that well norepinephrine is adrenaline all of those hormones are just they they don't they 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 need to go somewhere and uh, i think my my video is glitching a little bit here now sorry guys but continue to listen um it has to go somewhere and if it doesn't go somewhere it will be suppressed within the body and that will have negative impacts on cortisol levels chronic stress you know and so forth so really important to move when we're at that level. And I really want you to start thinking about how you can apply that to your life. So when you feel eight, nine, 10, you know, move, do something, exercise, start to get a feel for where your anxiety levels are, because if they're at a three or a four or a five, then it might be a good opportunity to practice some mindfulness, you know, just being some presence, being with it, that kind of thing. If it's not at an eight and a nine or a 10, you know, if it's kind of like a four or five or a six, that's a good opportunity for you to back practice presence, mindfulness, being with it. And being with it is also conducive to trying to get an idea as to where it came from. So we're practicing introspection here, learning more about ourselves and the ways we respond to the environment, the ways we respond to past experiences, you know, things like that. That's really a really great way to practice mindfulness then, you know, so the bathtub might not be rising in those moments, but it might be pretty high, you know, so a good chance to kind of settle and feel it out. But obviously, and this obviously depends upon who you are and what kind of lifestyle you lead because, you know, entrepreneurs and CEOs and people who just work crazy hours and are in those kind of stressful positions, you know, uh, full-time parents, whatever it is, um, they kind of have to operate at that five or six anyway, because they just have so much on. Now that's fine if that's what you're doing, but you need to know and figure out where an appropriate amount of stress and anxiety is for you based upon your current circumstances. And for most of us, I'd say below five is kind of what we want on a day-to-day basis. So recognizing that different tools to reduce your anxiety Um, are going to work at different times depending on what you're moving through. So this is the stuff we were really speaking about together. And I think it helped her understand, um, you know, that 
meditation and mindfulness might not be the best approach when she's moving through a panic attack because at that point it's just energy and it just needs to be released. Boxing, exercise, dancing, movement. You know, I move around a lot when I talk. I use my hands a lot. Um, maybe that's something that I do for my anxiety. I don't know. <laughs> but gaining that understanding I think really helped her as well. So a takeaway from today's show, I want you to have a think about um, A, where your current level of anxiety is and kind of where you operate from a day-to-day basis. B, if where you operate on a day-to-day basis is where you want to be operating, because it might be or it might not be, and you have to decide that for yourself, and C, what different tools you use depending upon your level of anxiety. So if you're at a zero to a three, what are you up to? Maybe it's nothing, maybe it's something. Three to a six, what do you do? Six to a nine and then 10, what do you do there? So maybe three different categories you can have a think about in terms of your anxiety. Um, guys, I, uh, I'm working now on Saturdays uh, in person if you find yourself in the Mornington area um, at, uh, at, uh, at a location. <laughs> um, you, you can actually uh, book in for a session if, you, if you'd like on, uh, on my link tree on my Instagram, which is kind of where I go through with all of my business. Online is obviously for all our um, interstate and um, international uh, people who listen to the show and thank you for listening to the show as well. But any questions as well, I'm always happy to ask some questions. I try to uh, reach, you know, people who do reach out and, and ask questions, we try to, you know, jump on some calls together because more often than not, they're just a few little tips and tricks that people can use to, to then go off and do what they need to do in their lives. And sometimes people really work well with counseling and other times, um, like I said, it's just a couple of little tips and tricks. So I'm always happy to to ask um to answer questions. I love it. This is what I do for work. I, I love talking about the mind and anything that can help better the mind, help us better understand ourselves um, as humans, philosophers, like what the hell are we doing here? This is weird. <laughs> so um, yeah, reach out if you need to, tom.ahern, that's on Instagram. And uh, guys, we have a massive podcast uh, coming up next week. I'm really, really excited to release it. Uh, he's a very big name. He's been on the show before and he's just released a brand new book. That is how much I'll give away uh, for the moment. But um, thank you so much for listening. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe speaking of books, if you want to have a read, I've got three books out at the moment. I'm writing a fourth. Um, first one is Yes, I'm Fine, Just Tired. Second one was But You Never Left. And my third latest book, Echoes from the Past, is all about the subjectivity of traumatic events and how we can move through that by looking forwards and creating a new identity because when we move through trauma, the actual act of moving through almost by definition infers some kind of existential destabilization and becoming. So forming a new identity based upon new concepts and insights gained from looking back in the past. Um, Really great stuff. Obviously I'm biased because I wrote it, but uh, I think it, I think it could really help. So you can also access that by um, jumping on my link, tr- link tree and purchasing um, the books through the link there on Amazon. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry about the video stuff today. I'm not really sure what happened there. I'm trying some new equipment um, uh, because I, I was using a camera, but I found a, a little bit too, um, what's the word, over encumbering um, based upon the setting of the office. So yeah, trying some new stuff here. We'll see how we go. And uh, yeah, speak to you soon. Bye.